In this quick video, we will cover a few tips, two of them actually, for easier working with UMG or Unreal Motion Graphics or the UI system in Unreal Engine 4. Now, with most things, when you're going to store a variable, you're going to promote something to a variable after you've created it or you've referenced it, it's not too much of an issue. It's going to create it of the correct type. However, when you're doing widgets, it is slightly different. Normally, you're going to create the widget. In this case, we're going to want to create, for example, our player UI or something. And then we're going to promote it or save it to a variable. Now, when you do this, it, when you promote, it pulls the variable type. Now, if you notice here, our output is a user widget. However, if I was to go ahead and change this to, for example, like, um, let's see, with the save game UI, we're going to notice our output is changed. Our output is now a simple save and load UI reference. Now, our variable that we've saved out is of user widget. Keep in mind, this widget right here is a child of user widget. So this will still stay connected and work fine. However, if there's something we wanted in there, for example, we wanted the ability to run any of the commands. So if we find our simple save widget and we look in here and we find something called, for example, update score. If we go back into our widget where we set it and we type in update score, it's not going to work. If we grab it from this one and type update score, it's going to work. The difference being this variable here was created after this was set. This variable was here. Here was created before it was set. So to make things easier, when you create a widget and actually type in the proper code to do it, so create a widget, don't promote to a variable after you create it. Make sure you select your proper class. This way your output is going to be of the proper type and then go ahead and promote to variable. Now for example, we could update score and it's going to work fine. It's not a big deal, but it helps you out by saving one less node you have to cast to. And it's useful if you ever need to reuse this variable more than one time. Another small one is animation. A lot of people don't know that UMG can animate. It's just as simple as that. Inside of here at the bottom is an animation section. And this is a normal keyframe animation system. Let me go ahead and go back to my game mode and disconnect this for a second. And let's go ahead and play through our example. We have our about button. When I push it, we get a little thing that pops up. And if I click, it'll go away. And that's using the built-in animation system. The animation system works by keyframing, like I said. So for example, if I wanted this word to go up or down, I could do a new animation. I would name it, for example, um, drop down title. And then you would set keyframes on anything you want to set. In this case, I could grab my name at the top. So for, I have an overlay image. Let me disable this temporarily uh, right here. So I grab my name. You'll notice the settings are here. Anything that could be keyframed or animated will have this keyframe animation setting. One thing to note, and this is something a lot of people have difficulty with if they're trying to animate. If you're going to animate the position, you're going to have to basically have this inside of a canvas panel. Canvas panels are the only parent that gives you exact positioning, not relatives. You can't exactly say, okay, change your position from this X to this X if you don't have that available. If, for example, I was inside of here and my play button, I want to animate the position, it's not going to work. My parent is a vertical box, no exact positioning. The text, its parent is a canvas slot, and I can do that. And if I wanted to animate it, it's like a normal keyframe system. Grab my animation name. Let's go at zero seconds. We're going to do something. We are going to change the position uh, Y. So we're keyframe on the Y. We'll go to here. And we now see you have a keyframe on the Y. If we were to move our graph over, you can see it's right here. And then after one and a half seconds, we're going to want to do something else. So we'll keyframe on the Y again. And now we have an animation with two keyframes. Now we don't have any values because I'd have to change them. If I wanted to make them proper, we could delete our keyframes. So let's just delete our entire thing. Let's take this and move it off screen. So our Y is going to be negative 200. Let's see if that worked. Yeah, negative 200 is a good start. Bring this back to zero seconds. 
keyframe that exact position, drag this to a second and a half, put this back to where we want it. So it's going to be 150, keyframe again, and now we have a basic animation we can play. If you need to adjust anything, you can right click and you can adjust the values on them, set key time for example. And if you want to use this animation, you would have to go into your graph and use the play animation node. Now one thing to note, if you try to, for example, play an animation, this is another one where people get a little bit stuck, it's going to ask you for the input animation and nothing's going to be here. You have two animations, but they won't show up on your list. Well, this is a little odd because of the way it works. It basically creates a variable in your variable list with the animation. So for example, you could drag it out and then hook it up. And that's how you would get access to your animations. So that's it. That's two simple quick tips for UMG to give you a little bit of hopeful flair and a little bit of speed up during your workflow.